Uh, moving on now to Tulsa, University of Tulsa, Coach Bill Blankenship. The uh, Golden Hurricane, 1-3 and three overall, 1-0 and oh in the American Athletic Conference. Uh, also was in action this past Saturday against Texas State. Texas State won the game 37-34 to 34 in triple overtime. Uh, up next for Tulsa, a road trip to Colorado State for a 3 p.m. Eastern time kick on the Mountain West Network. Uh, Coach, thanks so much for joining us on the call today. If you would take a minute to tie up the, uh, at least what was an exciting game against Texas State, and we expect to see as you hit the road to face Colorado State, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, absolutely very proud of the way our kids fought through three overtimes. Uh, you know, we we're very disappointed with, uh, with the ending of the game and the loss. Uh, you know, you can't diminish that in any way. Uh, the heartbreak of that, but uh, it, it was not lost on me a bit uh, how hard our our players played and fought for the entire game, uh, really beginning to, to see some things come together for us that uh, I'm very proud of. We played our best defense of, of the year um, and began to uh, see some some changes that I, I think are, are really beneficial to us. Uh, we'll have our hands full with Colorado State coming off of a Big win against uh, uh, Boston College, uh, who had beaten uh, USC the week before. Uh, I think Coach Mack has those guys playing extremely well, and uh, you know they're 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 uh, playing well. We'll be going into Fort Collins for that game. Three questions for Coach Blankenship, please. Star one on your telephone to join the queue. The operator would, will introduce you. And we'll take our next question from Mike Brohard from the Loveland Reporter Herald. Please go ahead. How are you doing today, Coach? Thank you, Mike. Uh, um, I was in that aspect, what they bring to your passing game? Well, uh, Garris Garrett was a young man that ironically had gotten hurt in the game a year ago uh, against Colorado State. He's a, a 6'3", uh, big receiver, uh, physical mismatch that 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 helps us to uh, spread the ball around. He's able. To, he gives us a pretty good deep threat and just a matchup problem. Uh, Keevan Lucas is a little more of a, uh, working inside the field, uh, working on safeties and linebackers, and so uh, the the combination of the two uh, are really important because I do believe that Kiaris. Uh, Garrett, as an outside receiver, allows uh, for a lot of times a safety has to be aware of him uh, and maybe give half-field help, uh, which uh, keeps them from being able to get on top of Keevan with two guys. And so what we're trying to do is is to keep those guys split out and uh, moving around and trying to isolate them on different defenders. And I believe we're getting enough play from our other receivers to, to keep that uh, – balance, so to speak, so that they can't just gang up on them. Was it one of those things, I know it, uh, Lucas started your last five games, was it one of those things where you started to see him build confidence at the end of last year that he brought in this year, and then when you get uh, Garrett back, it, it allowed him more space to move? No, you're exactly right. That's the uh, that's exactly the dynamic. Uh, Keevan Lucas was a uh, freshman last year that played for us and worked in. And by this time last year, he wasn't much of an impact. But as as the loss of Garrett uh, kind of we built on that and, and Lucas became our best receiver probably in, in a go-to situation, but he was still a true freshman and finding his way. Uh, he had a much more explosive game to start this season off against Tulane. But I, I do credit. Uh, the fact that he has Kiaris outside of him uh, and sometimes on the other side of the field that, that has helped to open him up. And, and they recognize that for each other as well. Thanks, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll now take our next question with Kelly Lyle with Fort Collins, Colorado. Coach, I wanted to ask you a little bit about just uh, – Facing that, you said your defense played your is coming off your best game yet. You're facing a, a pretty high-powered, pretty balanced Colorado State offense. What are the keys for you guys to kind of keep that offense under control? Well, I don't, I don't know. I, the, frankly, I think Colorado State is as good a all-around offense as, as we've seen since the Oklahoma uh, matchup. Uh, they do such a good job of, 
of throwing the football and using their tight ends and, uh, you know, t- uh, combination routes and mesh routes and those kind of things. But yet they, uh, I think, are creative in, in terms of the way they align uh, their formations. Uh, again, tight ends, big people, they'll do all that to be able to get, to get the, the little receiver loose uh, in the passing game. But then also they, they do a nice job using those two backs, um, and both of them are very good. I think the toughest mm-hmm. offenses to defend in the, in the country are the balanced ones, and I think Colorado State certainly fits into that mode. The other thing I wanted to ask you real quick is that Jake Hank, the kid from Fort Collins, is uh, playing yes. a lot for you. I guess you've moved him from linebacker to defensive end. What can you say about just uh, kind of what Jake's been able to do so far and what his future looks like? Uh, we're very excited about that young man. He's a tremendous athlete, uh, came in and really was a leader in the freshman class. We were able to redshirt him his first year, so that gives us the opportunity in the spring to move him to defensive end. He's very strong, very fast. Um, we're, we're pretty deep at that spot, and so he's not getting as many reps as uh, in game time as, as we'd like for him to have, but the future is really bright. Uh, I can't underestimate at all. Uh, how strong and, and how powerful we think he is and the kind of young man he is. We're very, very, very proud of Jake. He's on all of our special teams uh, and will get reps uh, at the defensive end spot in the game as well. But uh, uh, I think the next three years bode really well for him. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <clears throat> and we'll take our next question from Dan Tortora from Dan Tortora Broadcast Media. Hey, Coach. How are you doing today? Uh, Dan. Going into this game, I know you just described, obviously, you know what you're going up against in a very balanced offense, but where do you feel your team is at going into this matchup with Colorado State as far as where you feel they've built to this point? I know there's a three-game losing streak, but you mentioned the best defense you've seen so far. So how would you assess the team so far at this point? Well, the, the toughest thing for us right now is it's hard not to focus on the, the wins and losses because that certainly is the discouraging part of the, of the process. As we look at the process, though, I can tell you we're absolutely a better team than we were uh, to start the season. We've been playing our best ball this last week. Uh, we absolutely fought to the very end, uh, which those are, that, those are the things you ask from your team. Uh, we're a better defense. We're a better offense. I don't know if we're good enough to go de- defeat Colorado State, but I know we're on the right path. I think we're uh, getting a lot of young players ready to play, and they seem to be blossoming blossoming at the right time. I, I think we can be a, a formidable team through October uh, if we can just uh, continue on this path. It's kind of hard to quantify, uh, but I know what I see from our players, and I, I'm very excited about the leadership that these guys have provided both in the locker room and on the field. Um, I think we're a, we're a very hungry team, but, but our confidence has been, uh, has certainly taken a hit. You know, we're not, we're not used to losing like this. And, and uh, that's the, that's the tough part about the three overtimes that we put ourselves in a position to win and didn't finish it. When you talk about the leadership, who are some of those guys that stepped up, especially in this last loss where you said you fought to the bitter end of this game? Who are some of those people that you walk into this next game with saying, okay, these guys have the team on their back, they're willing to do what they need to do, and not to single anybody out, but if there is on offense, defense, and special teams, some guys that you look to in the locker room that have been uplifting the team? Oh, there are a number of them. Michael Mudo on defense. Uh, one of our safeties, uh, Derek Alexander on defense, Garrett Stafford on offense, uh, Dylan Foxworth. Um, gosh, these guys are just, you know, they're just passionate and they're, they're committed to this being uh, a team that they can define and uh, know a lot more about. Trent Martin's another one. Uh, you know, Austin McDaniel on special teams and on defense. I mean, those guys are doing a great job of leading this team. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Coach, we thank you for your time today. We look forward to talking to you again next Monday. All right. Appreciate it.